simple rule of modern eating. Its name, get this, the Heart Attack Grill. This is ringing alarm bells this morning over pork safety. A new study shows bacteria that continue to eat most meat. William Brangham has a story when it comes to bowel cancer. What do you eat from a conventional psychiatrist? Growing up, I would ask my parents to take me and my brother to our favorite fast food chain for breakfast or lunch or dinner, sometimes even for midnight snacks. I would ask for some mac and cheese, cheesy nuggets, burgers, all the good stuff. Just thinking about it made my body crave for it. And at a young age, our minds were conditioned that these are what makes life worthwhile. These are the good stuff, the good food. But as I grew older, I started wondering where's my comfort food coming from? What's it made out of? I often used to think, hmm, is the cheese really healthy? Is the milk really from a cow from a far away land? What did they feed the cow? Was it grass fed? Are they well taken care of? By consuming this, am I taking good care of myself? If for once in your life you've wondered about food and all that comes along with it, then before taking a bite of that juicy, tender burger, I suppose you should ask yourself first, wait, what's in it? I've always tried to live a healthy life and to keep a healthy lifestyle. In a world where diseases never seem to stop evolving and is slowly taking over, I try to prevent acquiring these as best as I can. Cause hey, I'm planning on sticking around for a really long time. I try to eat a healthy balanced diet as much as I can and I try to follow recipes that are healthy. I try to exercise as often as I can and focus on becoming the healthiest possible version of myself, knowing the ever-evolving diseases that keep appearing every so often. So I started researching a lot on the first thing I should focus on if I wanted to be healthy. And you guessed it. It's food. One of the major problems in the United States is the ever-growing population of people living with diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic health condition that greatly affects the way your body turns the food you eat into energy. It happens when your body can't take up sugar or glucose into its cells to be used as fuel. The thing about diabetes is that it can be genetic. But one of the biggest misconceptions about it is that people often think that once one of the family member has it, you're automatically going to have it as well. Another is that it is caused by consuming too much sugar and sweets. Well. That's not always the case. Lifestyle factors play a big role in acquiring diabetes. It is generally how you live your day-to-day -day life. Diabetes is caused by having a diet that produces tiny particles of fat that causes insulin resistance. The sugar that your body supposedly needs is blocked from getting into the cells. So if it gets blocked, how will your body produce energy? All the things you just consumed will eventually just turn into saturated fat. And I'm telling you, you do not want that stored in your body. Two-thirds of adults are overweight and are obese. Keep getting fatter in spite of government efforts ranging from calorie posting to new school lunch programs. We asked Nightline's John Donvan to sift through all the reporting we've done on the problem over the past year to try to find the real villain. Condition. You know, it is a radical approach, but if he can't get it soon, his body will be, will not be strong enough to even have that done. But what we learn is that if you are obese as a child, meaning that you're carrying extra weight, you are more likely to be obese as an adult. Most of us consume processed food, especially processed meat almost every day. Especially in the American culture, it goes like back on to go with eggs in the morning chicken nuggets from a drive through in the afternoon, fries and beef for dinner, and all that. But did you know that processed meat or your favorite deli are carcinogenic? Carcinogenic foods are foods that can cause cancer according to World Health Organization. It is said that one serving of your favorite deli can increase your risks of getting colorectal cancer by almost 18%. And according to most studies, your food intake also plays a big role in producing or preventing cancer cells. You may think, why are they still selling all this, knowing it's going to eventually put our health at risk? Well, I too have a lot of questions, but one of the biggest ones is what am I supposed to eat now if all my favorite foods are unhealthy? Does switching to a chicken-based diet help? People love to eat a good fried chicken, 
In fact, almost everybody's favorite food is a good old crispy fried chicken with a thick gravy sauce on the side. After hearing all this, you might be thinking chicken would be a healthier substitute to consuming beef, pork, and processed meat. But after a lot of research in, I found out that, well, that's not entirely the case. You see, chicken is the leading source of sodium in America. Diets containing high amount of sodium are often associated with an increased risk of developing high blood pressure, which can eventually cause stroke and heart diseases. Other potentially dangerous stuff in your daily are heterocyclic amines, which are carcinogens that can form in all kinds of meat and by far the biggest source is chicken. When you consume meat, your body immediately reacts to it and sends a part of that reaction to your heart. So you can imagine how our hearts will react if you keep giving it to the wrong type of food. As I did my research, I found out that a lot of diseases are actually caused by the food we eat. In fact, before this, I was not even aware of the fact that dementia can be caused by developing an unhealthy diet. When our hearts get clogged up, dementia cells in our brains get clogged up too. The chain reaction from one part of our body being clogged up to another leads to a much bigger health problem in the future. But what actually intrigues me is that most of the health related sites I could find online promotes diets that are meat based. Recipes for different dishes that mainly revolve around meat can be found on their pages and are suggested to their followers. Why is that? I know you are as confused as I was. In this day and age, many of us have grown to be much more sensitive to the things we say and act. One of them is being a lot more sensitive towards someone's weight. While it does wonders to a person's mental health, doctors and health experts would like to point out that being too comfortable with living an unhealthy lifestyle can greatly affect one's physical health and it can be dangerous in the long run. The absence of exercise and not having a balanced diet will eventually take a toll on you and could cause some serious problems if not taken care of. People often think that when someone is considered fat, it is because they eat too much sweets or sugars or carbohydrates. But that's not exactly true. While consuming too much sweets is not exactly good for you, having a little too much of everything else can be twice as dangerous. We have this thinking that sugar is bad for the body when it is not so much. What's bad for us is the accumulated fat left in our system that we can't get rid of due to our unhealthy lifestyle. The same goes for carbohydrates. We actually do need this. Trust me, they won't make you fat unless you're consuming way too many carbs from junk food. One of the biggest revelations I found while I was doing this research is that there are certain food we eat on the daily that is as unhealthy as smoking 5 cigarettes a day. Can you imagine? Meaning to say, if I went on living my life, thinking what I am doing is harmless. I don't even want to know what would happen. Studies show that one serving of deli can increase your chances of developing diabetes by 51% and over 17 million people die from cardiovascular diseases every single year. Studies show that one serving of deli can increase your chances of developing diabetes by 51% and over 17 million people die from cardiovascular diseases every single year. One of the suggestions from ACS or the American Cancer Society is to switch to a chicken-based diet. But according to a study conducted by Harvard University, a chicken-based diet can help increase the development of having cancer by almost four times. I don't know about you, but four times the chances is a big red flag. I guess I'm not the only one questioning why a meat-based diet is being suggested by all these health organizations, right? So if chicken isn't as safe as I thought it was, would fish be a better alternative? The fish we buy through groceries and marketplaces are all from fisheries around the country that help manage the industry. Fisheries have their own specific way of sustaining their business and how they grow their fish. Though it is seen as less toxic it doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Like chickens live in a den, cows in a barn. Fish also live in an environment where they are given antibiotics to help them grow into how their producers want them to. The thing about fish is that they carry mercury. Mercury is a naturally occurring element that is found in air, 
water and food. It is highly toxic substance that through bioaccumulation can lead to a mercury poisoning. If exposed to too much mercury, it can pretty much destroy our natural ecosystem and humans as well. This is due to the ability of mercury to damage the central nervous system. The tuna that everyone loves so much and loves to eat fresh from sushi bars and restaurants may also be carrying in some estrogenic and cancer promoting properties in them. Toxins can simply be brought back to the fact that they are being raised by human beings through antibiotics and other medicinal stuff. The most notorious toxins being dioxins. Dioxins are man-made chemicals that can cause a lot of health problems. These are formed and are mainly byproducts of industrial practices. And to make things worse, men have no way of getting rid of these dioxins. But women on the other hand, they have two ways. Women can get rid of these dioxins through breastfeeding and through placenta. When a woman gets pregnant, there is a fair chance that everything the woman consumes automatically can be transmitted to the baby inside her womb. So if the woman doesn't think too much of the things she's eating while carrying the baby, it might greatly affect the infant's health condition in the long run. You have to keep in mind that being exposed to all these chemicals might not generate immediate results. Say for example, I eat a slab of tuna today. My body won't start acting up after taking that last bite. In some cases, mercury poisoning happens almost instantly. But in most cases, it takes a little while to show up. It's almost as if the body is trying to help get rid of all the toxic things you're feeding it. It may not be today that you start to notice the shift in your body. But trust me on this. It will. Eventually. See, the thing that plays a big role in contributing to all these effects is the industry where we get our food from. Most of the pigs and cows and chickens we consume come from farms and barns where most of them are not well taken care of. Say for example, a cow gets sick of some sort. The disease might spread to all other cows even before the sick cow gets treated. That can cause a huge problem. And not only that, it's not only the animals that suffer from all this. Even the people who live within that area suffer all these problems. If you live in an environment where chemicals are used quite often, it can of course bring in a lot of health problems. That is because you are being exposed to toxins that aren't meant for human beings. Being exposed to those can help develop health problems like asthma, skin diseases and worse, cancer. Oftentimes these people know what goes on behind the food industry. I've read somewhere that the mad cow disease is apparently a real thing, yet the US government did very little to nothing regarding its spread. Residents who live close to these farms know how a H1N1 was formed or how the bird flu started, yet no one pays attention to what they have to say. Because of course, who would have the courage to stand up against these big corporations when you are just a small town folk yourself? I had a really tough time trying to piece together all the information I have gathered upon touching this subject. But the more I dug deeper, the more I found out about how things really are in the food industry. How little to nothing we know of how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And mostly, how little access we have to information that greatly affects us, our bodies and our lives. So, if beef and pork aren't good for you, chicken isn't too. And the fish is kind of tricky. So what do we eat now? I tried to look for recipes that people can try and that doesn't rely heavily on meat or if you could completely cut it out. There are tons of recipes available to try on the internet. Most of them contain cheese, milk, eggs, all that good stuff. But like anything else, I just wanted to know, is dairy safe? I've always loved me a good fluffy omelette in the morning. I used to add a bit of milk to make it extra fluffy. Eggs are just a standard, you know. I mean, who doesn't like eggs? And besides the breakfast platter, you'll always find a glass of fresh milk. It's just that perfect combination to start your day. But after a bit of research, I found out that I shouldn't be a little too happy consuming all this. Eggs are not particularly the healthiest option there is. The yolk of an egg has the most saturated fat and cholesterol you can ever have in food. That's like eating a greasy old McMuffin. And no, I don't think cow's milk is any good too. First of all, why would we drink something that is made for cows? Cow's milk or anything produced with cow's milk 
are the most allergic type of food out there. Have you ever considered why a lot of people are actually lactose intolerant? Maybe it's because the milk they produce isn't made for human beings. Maybe that's why our bodies react differently when being fed with cow's milk. According to research, milk does not help your bones get stronger. Our minds may have been manipulated by all the commercials we've seen growing up from mindless hours spent in front of the television. As I go through all this, I keep wondering, how much more is there left to discover? Is there anything left for me to eat? Come in with the milk. 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 Of course, as a cheese lover, I just had to see for myself the effects cheese has on the human body. Cheese makes everything better, right? Corn dogs and pizzas and pastas and all that. It has all the good stuff. Flavor-wise, yes. But health-wise, well, you might want to think about that. Cheese is altogether a mix of animal product, is highly processed and has too much salt. And cheese also carries casomorphins. Now, casomorphins is a casein-derived morphine-like compound that hits the spots in our brains the way heroin does. That's the reason why it's so addicting. It's literally like a drug. And consuming dairy doesn't only hurt your tummy, but it can also cause skin problems like eczema and the like. So you might be thinking, if all these are bad for me and could cause me my life, then why are health organizations suggesting me to consume all this? After mindless hours of scrolling through their pages, I did some research and then it all came together. They were all sponsored by major meat and poultry companies in the industry. Their studies get funded by them. Of course, they will help the companies grow. Maybe it's all just business. Maybe they're both there to support each other. But what makes me wonder is why the government hasn't done anything to stop this mess. And it slowly started to make sense. Big companies like McDonald's, the National Dairy Council, American Meat Institute, Kellogg's Craft, The Hershey Company, American Egg Board, Dairy Management Inc., General Mills, Pfizer, Lilly, Sanofi, AstraZeneca, Bayer Takeda, Amgen, and a whole lot more help fund these institutions. So of course, they're trying to promote them. It's all business. Life is a cycle. You buy food from big companies, you eat it, you develop a health problem, you go to your doctor to get help, they help you. You pay them, the hospital will then pay taxes and the cycle continues. It's never ending. It makes absolutely no sense and at the same time makes absolutely sense. It's crazy genius if you ask me. I searched for other ways to live a healthy lifestyle and set the best diet for me out there. All the pages on the internet have different views on what a healthy diet is. Doctors say there is no healthy diet. All there is is a balanced meal, not too much, not too little. But then again, doctors are not the right person to take your nutrition advice from. So is there a way to not consume anything toxic at all? Health specialists and nutrition experts suggest switching to a plant-based diet. I know it may sound bland and you might be rolling your eyes right now, but it makes sense. We as humans, we are trained to think we need animal meat or dairy to get all the nutrients and vitamins our bodies need. But don't these animals get all the nutrients they need from plants themselves? Most animals are herbivores and are just designed to eat plants. They've been doing so for ages and have been surviving on their own. If that's the case, aren't we going to find all the good stuff in plants as well? Does that mean we really do not need to consume animal products to survive? Well, you might want to think about that. Before you dismiss the idea of switching to a plant-based diet, maybe you can try some recipes and dishes first. If you're willing to live a healthy lifestyle and live disease-free, this is where you can choose to eat smarter, healthier and could eventually make yourself stronger. There are a lot of artists and athletes that have made this switch and their stories are very inspiring. Most of them feel a lot more stronger. Many of them say it's their way of thanking their bodies for not falling apart and for pushing forward. It's a great way to pay back and the body that carries you every day now, isn't it? And also, wouldn't it feel so much better to know you aren't harming both animals, the environment and human beings when you are presented with a nice meal? I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds quite grand. 
Knowing you're helping the world become a safer place for all and being an advocate of change is something to be proud of. If you're thinking of switching, hats off to you my friend. Well, this video wasn't made to make fun of health organizations and doctors and companies, but it is for everyone to have a wider knowledge of the things we put inside our body. If you pass this information on and share this video with your friend, it can maybe help save a life in the future. If you're not very keen on the idea, then maybe we can just agree to disagree. In a time where information is readily available through the help of technology, it's best if we practice to question some things we have always been curious about. We are designed to think. We are designed to be smarter with our choices. So next time you take a bite of your favorite comfort food, may it be taco, a subway sandwich or whatnot. Maybe you might want to take a second ask, wait, what's in it?